Good afternoon. My name is Carolina Gilcathy, and I would love to share with you this wonderful part of the world, Patagonia, which is the southern end of Chile and Argentina. We've been working on this trip for quite a while. I want to go through the itinerary with you so you kind of understand the logistics, how everything works, what's included, what's in store for you. So let me share my screen and you will be able to see the PDF that I am sending to you as well. I look forward to hearing all of your thoughts. Let me zoom in so you can see as much as you, you can here. Okay, so on this itinerary, we're going to tackle Chile and Argentina. This will give you kind of a, a good view of Patagonia from the southern point where there are glaciers and then the northern point where there are lakes and mountains and other excursions, completely different atmosphere. So we start December 21st. You're going to take that overnight flight to Chile, landing in Santiago. This is a trip for you. So once you land in Santiago, my team will be waiting for you with a big sign with your names on it, and we will take you to your hotel in the afternoon because most likely that flight will be overnight and you're going to arrive in the morning you're going to check in refresh and in the afternoon we're going to do a little fun walking tour of Santiago so you can do some tasting you can do exploration stretch your legs after the long flight let the kids run around and of course taste candy and local treats and it's a really fun afternoon a great welcome to Chile uh, Santiago is a really wonderful city um, and so we will spend and two nights here. This is our first night standing, staying at the Pullman Santiago El Bosque. I chose this hotel uh, because it is a very modern hotel, very well uh, respected. People really like it. They have connecting rooms, so it's great for your family. And we have two rooms just like this uh, um, um, available for you, okay? And then the next day, if you look at the map of Chile, it is just like a long uh, strip of land, uh, which means that you're on the coast pretty much anytime you travel up and down uh, the country. So Santiago is just two and a half hours away from the coast and December is summer, which means it is peak season for the coastal villages. Um, there is Valparaíso, which is a really colorful, fun town. This is the picture of it. It has a big pirate history, so it's great for kids. Really good for walking around. Um, and then there's a little train that goes up and down. We're going to do that as well. It's right next to Viña del Mar, which is the beaches of Santiago, which is where all the locals go. So we can go there for uh, lunch. We can have a really nice day. If you are wine drinkers, we can incorporate uh, the vineyards because literally to get from Santiago to the coast, you're driving through the Casablanca Valley and we can arrange tastings, grape juice tastings, which we do for kids. My kids love that. Uh, you know, and a lunch on the vineyard instead of on the coast. But I said just on the coast simply because um, that's going to be your only opportunity in this area. And of course, Pablo Neruda is a famous um, poet and he comes from this area and his house is there. So the Chileans are very proud of this location. And now December 24th, we are ready to leave the city behind and head down to Patagonia. Uh, I discussed with Abby adding extra days in the city, and I really suggest you do that at the end in Buenos Aires. Santiago is great, but it is a big metropolitan city. Uh, not ideal for walking around on your own because it's so spaced out, where Buenos Aires is great for walking around on your own. So I added the night there, and I will show you when we get to the end of the trip. But that is why we only have two nights in Santiago. All right, so we take you to the airport and we fly to Puerto Natales in the Patagonia region, which is huge. There are multiple airports, so we always figure out which airport allows us a nonstop flight, which airport is the closest to the lodge, which airport can we get transfers to. So leave the logistics to me, uh, but this is what we're looking at. It will be a flight that leaves in the morning at 9.42, and you would arrive in Puerto Natales by one o'clock. So it's about three and a half hour flight to the south of the country. Uh, Puerto Natales is the entry to Torres del Paine National Park. It is the closest airport to Torres del, um, del Paine National Park. And here is located the singular Patagonia Lodge. I love this experience. I've done this myself. I've been to Patagonia multiple times and we stayed here at the singular. I love the combination of being a being close enough to the village that you can go to a village and do excursions like 
kayaking on a glacial lake, like going condor nest searching, which is one of their excursions, but you also have access to the national park. So you're going on all the beautiful hikes or four by four tours or the caves and so much more. So the way Singular works is we have incorporated two rooms for your family. I am still waiting to get that approved. Singular and all Patagonia hotels are very, very strict about their fire codes and um, amount of people that they're allowed in rooms. So I am discussing that with them and I will get that for you uh, updated as soon as I know if we can be approved for two rooms. But the hotel has a great spa and I chose this uh, picture for you because it shows you that this pool, which is the only pool in Patagonia, has an indoor and outdoor pool connected. So much fun for kids. I think you're going to really enjoy it. All of the meals are included in Pata at the Singular Patagonia. So once you arrive, they're going to make sure everybody's fed and you, you're there for four nights, which means you have three full days of excursions and you can choose two half day excursions where you come back for lunch in the lodge or one full day excursion every day where your lunch is either at an estancia somewhere or a alfresco picnic set up for you. They do a beautiful job with uh, all of these details. And every day there are 20, 20 or 24 excursions available. They kind of let you know uh, what's available tomorrow. You sit down with a glass of wine in the evenings and discuss what you would like to do. Sometimes you pre-plan all your days at once if that's what you want to do. But there are hikes, you know, four by four rides. There are glaciers. There are boat rides. There are bike rides. There are horses. Um, so many different excursions. So I just put a sample of three or four that are directly from their 2024 list of uh, excursions. So navigation to fjords and glaciers. If you want to see that, that is a place to do it right here from the singular. And it's, in, you know, all of these are included. Torres del Paine National Park. This is a must. You must take your family for a full day in the park. That should definitely be one of your uh, three full day tours. Uh, and then, of course, there's caves, there's uh, cooking classes, there are photo, uh, photo safaris. So your group can actually split up if some of you want to do a really tough hike or something longer. And maybe someone wants to stay behind with the kids and do a cooking class. By all means, this is your trip and the lodge will work with you to make sure everyone is assigned to something that they are happy with. After four nights at the lodge, we're going to take the driver and have them take you back to the airport. So on this particular note, I chose another airport. It's called Punta Arenas. It's about an hour and a half away from the lodge. But the reason I chose it is because it has a nonstop flight to northern Patagonia, to the land of lakes and mountains. It's called the Lake District. And the airport is Puerto Montt. And this is kind of like just our stopping place because this is a travel day. We're going to travel to the airport. We're going to fly to Northern Patagonia, pick you up, take you to the hotel and rest in Puerto Varas, which is just a charming little village right on the uh, right on the lake, massive lake. Um, and you can just rest here, go and walk around town, see the volcano and prepare for the next day because the next day is our busiest day of the whole trip. So now uh, if you, we have been in Chile for this past week or eight days, and this is just a quick map of the Lake District uh, that is split between Chile and Argentina. And there's one family that does this lake crossing excursion. They have the rights to all of the boats, all of the uh, buses, everything that they do. And it runs like clockwork and it's so beautifully done, but it's a full day of adventure. So as you see, the Lake District is all water and land, river and islands. So they, this family has connected, this company has connected all of the islands between different boats. Some are ferries, some are catamarans, some are big, some are small. It's a lot of fun. And then on the islands, you do excursions, you stop for lunch, you have free time. You can even zip line um, along the way. And then at the end of the day, you are in Argentina around the area of Bariloche or Puerto Pañuelos. Uh, so in this region. From this region, we will pick you up and take you to your next Patagonia Lodge. So this is just one of the boats, one of the excursions. That's a volcano right behind Josarno, uh, but lots of different uh, activities. How does it work? 
All of your luggage gets transferred. Everybody, there's porters that will do all of that for you. You just show up. You just go on the excursions. There's English speaking guides all throughout, uh, and there'll be plenty of other people. This is the number one excursion or a kind of adventure in this northern Patagonia region. Lots of fun, and it runs like clockwork. It reminds me of kind of uh, in Norway, there's very similar crossings where it's a combination of train and bus and boat and they put it all into one experience and it kind of gives you a nice glimpse into Patagonia. So now we are in Northern Patagonia in the land of lakes and mountains and you are at this River House Lodge. This is a private home that has been transformed into an all-inclusive lodge. I believe it hosts no more than, I want to say, 16 people. So it's very intimate. And the main purpose of this lodge and why they keep it so small is that they want to have one-on-one -on -one service so that your family, which will occupy three rooms because you mandatory have to have three rooms, they cannot do seven people in two rooms, you will be able to work with the guides, work with the chef, work with the whole team to make sure everything is done for your family the way you like it. I love this experience. I love the way Patagonia does service. Uh, everything's kind of fluid according to your likes, which I love. And by having the same guide day after day, they kind of get to know your likes, your dislikes, what you have seen, what you want to see, and they work with you to build this, build this itinerary. Again, all of your meals, open bar, the same as at the singular. They have a gym, hot tub, sauna, spa, you know, all of that is included. And you will be here for four nights. This is an aerial shot of where the lodge is. I mean, it, it's stunning and completely different than Torres del Paine and the singular lodge in Puerto Natales. This is uh, San Martin de los Andes is the name of the village. Uh, the closest village, let's say. And then Bariloche is the closest large airport. So what will you do here for four nights? Uh, we have been going, right? We've been doing excursions. We've been moving around. So you have included one daily activity here. One of the activities is spa uh, massages at the spa. So if somebody wants to not go out horseback riding or riding bicycles or going on hikes and want to enjoy a day at the spa instead at a massage, you're welcome to do that. That's included. Uh, but mountain biking, e-bikes, yoga classes, tango classes, kayaking. You can even organize a personal shopping tour to San, San Martin de los Andes to buy some amazing leather, uh, you know, alpaca uh, products, really great things. Um, and then trekking. And then, um, of course, horseback riding, they have their own horses. So you can do all of those excursions, pick one a day, spend the afternoon relaxing or spend the mornings relaxing. It's a really great gaucho culture, you know, completely different than in Southern Patagonia. Uh, you will see as you explore this area, there is a lot of working ranches, which adds just to the flavor. And you will spend New Year's Eve there. So the uh, January 2nd, when we check out, we're going to take you to the airport and fly you to Buenos Aires. It's a nonstop flight. And here we're going to pick you up and take you to the Madero area and uh, Puerto Madero area. And the hotel is called Madero after the neighborhood. It's on the river and it's very close to that colorful area of La Boca and San Telmo, where the market takes place, where there's an indoor market, where we can do some fun eating around, um, which is really great for running around with the kids and you're walking distance to the pink castle to the main square so it's a really great location i have stayed here at this hotel as well uh and every year i take a group to argentina for tango dancing so we know all the spots in that colorful neighborhood for sure so i included two nights here at the end for you so the first night you first day you arrive you have an afternoon free go stretch your legs explore the city it's great for walking and then January 3rd, we're going to let you sleep in and then do an afternoon tour of uh, the south area of the city. So all of those sites that I just mentioned, you'll go with a guide and he'll show you the you know all the wonderful places. We'll have a lunch at a um, 
Bodegon, which is like a, a traditional old restaurant, usually looks like grandma's house, mismatched chairs and family photos on the wall, but the best food is in those little places. And I forgot to mention on arrival, we can arrange a welcome dinner for you as well. I included it here for you, but uh, let me know if you kind of want to have a break from arranged meals because for, you know, eight nights in a row, you would have had um, all of your meals included. And then at the end, um, uh, day 15, January 4th, we're going to take you to the EZE Airport, Azaza Airport, and fly you home uh, from, from there. So you let me know what your flights look like because sometimes they fly out in the evening. And if that is the case, then we can start discuss adding late checkout or adding another excursion, something to occupy your time so you're not sitting in the lobby until the evening transfer to the airport. That is what Patagonia looks like. I'm more than happy to answer any of your questions. This is peak season. I do have to be honest with you. Availability is super fluid. And um, even though hotels are telling me they're holding it for, for us, um, it's first come, first serve, really. So let me know what you think about these two lodges. And we can take it from there. We can tweak it any way you'd like. I am so happy to help Abby and you with this excursion. It's one of my favorite places in the world. So happy travels. Let me know what you think. <laughs>